Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing a bit of a rough series in Pittsburgh over the weekend for the Phillies. Some good, uh, more bad, but they'll bounce back, and I'll tell you why on today's episode. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm your host, Connor Thomas. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We come to you live on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that great stuff that really helps us out. You may know me from some of my other content. I've been doing Philly Sports Talk Radio for about five years in the city at 97.5 The Fanatic and three years credentialed Philadelphia Phillies media member. And this is my third year as the host of Lock On Phillies. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and you can use code, it's all in lowercase, locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. So go ahead and check out our friends over at Prize Picks. It was not a great weekend for the Philadelphia Phillies. Now they salvaged yesterday's game. 6 nothing in the series finale. It was a solid performance by the Philadelphia Phillies. Nick Castellanos went yard. His comedic timing, if you're up to date on the big stories around the country, uh, is unbelievable. And also unbelievable. Tyler Phillips, man, he was so good yesterday. The kid's second career MLB start and he gives you a great performance. He goes six innings, four hits, no earned runs, one walk, three strikeouts. Like he didn't really have the strikeout going, but didn't really need it. Solid defense behind him. It was just a solid game for the Phillies and a shutout effort over the Pirates. But that's not the only story from the weekend. There's a lot of stuff to break down over this series with the Pirates. Let's continue with the good, and then we'll get into the not so good. JT Ramito's back. J.J. Romito returned to play in this series against the Pirates. Now, he hasn't done anything incredible. Like, he did throw out a base runner his first game back that just shows you. Like, it was one of those throws where it's like, oh, that's right. Garrett Stubbs ain't doing this. Raphael Marchand ain't doing this. Also, by the way, Raphael Marchand, the one sent down. Garrett Stubbs still on the roster. I told you this is what the Phillies are going to do. They're going to keep the continuity. They're going to stay on brand with what they did this offseason. So now your catcher position at JT Romito and Garrett Stubbs looks a lot better than you had it with Raphael Marchand and Garrett Stubbs being the two guys that you have to split between. I mean, the Phillies are now lineup-wise at full health which is a good thing. They're not firing on all cylinders because JT still got to work his way back and get into the swing of things. And Bryson Stott's got stuff he needs to figure out. They need to make moves at the deadline, which will be a week from tomorrow, the MLB trade deadline. So a lot of stuff still to do, but JT coming back basically gives you the full complement of what the Phillies wanted to have in their lineup ahead of the trade deadline. It's a great thing. And it's great that they stole that game in game three because the first two games, we got to get into the uh, not so great from the Pirates series, which is, there's a lot more conversation on this than there was about the positive. Dropping two or three to the Pirates is not ideal. They're not like a garbage baseball team. They're two games over 500 now. So it's like they're, they're right in the mix in the National League for like a wild card spot. I don't think they're a playoff team when everything's all said and done, but they have some really nice pieces and some really, really nice players out there in Pittsburgh. And man, I... I <laughs> While I do say that, I look at Friday night's loss. We haven't broken it down yet. Jose Alvarado blowing a save. Orion Kirkering not having a great appearance out of the bullpen. Nola not being able to step up when his team gives him a 3 nothing lead. Like From Jump Street, it looked like the Phillies were on the Pirates. They had a lead late, and then they went out, and they just flat out blew it. I mean, the 4-1 loss on Saturday was just kind of uh, Luis Ortiz shut you down. It was one of those days where you ran into a pitcher who had a really good day. Only so much you can do there. They didn't get shut out because of Bryce Harper Homer, which is nice to see. He's been unbelievable this year and is continuing to be unbelievable. But the real sticking point of this series was game one because you should have won game one. You had every opportunity to lock that down. And it pointed out a lot of things. One of the first things it points out is that the Phillies could probably use some significant bullpen help at the trade deadline. I already told you, I want Mason Miller. That is the guy that might be like a trade everybody type of guy for me. Uh, who knows? Now, I'm hearing that the Phillies have Andrew Painter and Crawford off the table. Justin Crawford are not being moved, but Aiden Miller could be available 
in the right package. I don't know that I love that, but like for Mason Miller, I would get the job done. Let's do a Miller for Miller swap. Aiden Miller for Mason Miller. I don't think anyone's saying no to that on the Philadelphia side. The athletics would probably need more prospects. But bottom line is this. like The Phillies don't have a defined closer. Jose Alvarado has not been at his best. Matt Strom and Jeff Hoffman are not true closers, even though they've been really good. Orion Kirkring has not blossomed into that role yet. He hasn't even reached 162 games of MLB service time. So like you're looking at a situation where – an acquisition for a closer like Mason Miller, maybe someone else in baseball that has closing experience would be welcome. The other thing that came out of Friday night's game, and I know we're talking about the series in general, like yesterday's game, great win for the Phillies. I'm excited that they have not yet been swept by any team in baseball. That's a good thing, but I need the fan base to do me a favor, right? Uh, can we just accept that Rob Thompson is as good of a manager as his record says he is? Like, I saw so many people after Friday night's game. Did he have the best game managerial-wise? Like, no, he, he did not. The Alvarado situation was probably not a good decision considering he's been struggling for a while now, putting him in a big spot with a chance to close out the game. I understand having faith in your players. I also understand going to the better arms or the arms that are performing better right now in big spots. And one game, two games, is not going to kill the Philadelphia Phillies. I mean, we got some really big news. We're going to talk about the Braves a little bit later because <laughs> Whit Merrifield is now a member of the Atlanta Braves. But the Braves lost Ozzy Albies for eight weeks over the weekend. He has a fracture in his wrist, I believe it is. Max Freed is a little bit like banged up right now. The Braves are falling apart, man. So the Phillies should have a stranglehold on the division, even if they just play average baseball the rest of the way. So I'm not worried about this long term. That's one part of the equation. It's not like, oh, it's a huge game. You need every last one of these or else you're in trouble. Like, no, I think the Phillies are going to be fine. Not losing series, but if they lose a series every once in a while, it's not worth freaking out about in any capacity, regardless of what happens short of injury. I'll always knock on wood when I bring up injury because a lot of it's luck. But people are questioning Rob Thompson's in-game decision-making in general off of the way that he managed the game on Friday night. Like, I don't know where this lack of faith – well, that's a lie. I was going to say I don't know where this lack of faith in Rob Thompson comes from. I know exactly where this lack of faith in Rob Thompson comes from. It comes from pulling Zach Wheeler in the World Series in the final game in 22 and giving Alvarado a matchup with Jordan Alvarez, ending up in a home run that was basically that – deciding blow in the final game of the World Series. And in the NLCS, it felt like you had an opportunity to take a stranglehold of that series, maybe like win the series. And Craig Kimbrell goes out in Arizona in a spot that he probably should not have been in given the way he had been pitching lately and blows a game for the Philadelphia Phillies. And that was Rob Thompson's decision as well. And the whole fan base was like, yo, why in the world would you go with Kimbrell there? But in reality, what did I just list out? I listed out two decisions. And they were both on brand with Rob Thompson's process at the time. It wasn't like he threw a Ryan Kirk ring to close out a game in the NLCS or he threw in that in the World Series. He didn't go to like a reliever in the bullpen who was struggling mightily. Like, no, he got lefty lefty, your power versus their power. And Kimbrell had been the guy he had gone to in safe situations or late game, like high leverage stuff all year last year. You might disagree with the thought process on putting Kimbrell out there, but it was the same one he'd been using. So people might look at that as like, oh, in big spots, he makes the wrong decision. Well, no, he just makes the same decisions he's been making all year. And it's not pressure, right? If it was pressure, pressure to me, you can tell when guys are feeling pressure by when they act uncharacteristically they make an uncharacteristically bad play a bad at bat a bad managerial decision that you say he hasn't done anything like that all year his stuff's been on brand i don't think rob thompson's cracking under pressure i think he's made two decisions that did not work out in the past two postseasons and they're both decisions that i disagreed with at the time but if he sticks with his process I can't fault him. And you don't get to a winning percentage like Rob Thompson has had. I think he's won like 58% of his games since taking over as Phillies manager. He's gone to the World Series once, the NLCS twice in two years. Like, it's just he's been unbelievable. So I don't understand the part of the fan base that sees that. And their immediate reaction is to run to social media and tweet about how Rob Thompson has no idea what he's doing and no feel of how to manage a bullpen. Like, you don't 
win this many games. You don't have an eight and a half game lead in the division. Like you don't have a four games up in the win column lead over the Dodgers by not knowing how to manage a bullpen. Rob Thompson's a great manager. And these sweeping conclusions after single games of series that don't have that much impact because your team has already built themselves so much of a buffer, it is flat out insane to me that this is how some people think. I'm telling you, Rob Thompson's a good manager. The Phillies are fine. And I know people weren't like saying, oh, this isn't a good baseball team anymore. But like everything is okay, I promise you. And you could get upset over single games. Like, I was not happy. I was at the bars, hit my hand on the uh, the bar top, just like upset as the Phillies gave back that lead and it's kind of a defeating feeling playing a team like the Pirates that you should close out. But the other thing you have to remember is how many games this year have the Phillies won that they shouldn't have? Like, how many times have other teams collapsed and the Phillies have taken advantage? Like, and Phillies – baseball creates pressure whether you're playing them at citizens bank park or on the road like playing against this team you see that they're a tough team to match up with not just because of reputation but because of the way that they play so they're causing i'm not saying like it's all luck but i am saying over 162 games like friday night games like saturday they happen you avoid getting swept you go into a series with the Twins coming up that's going to be a very interesting one because they are 10 games over 500. They are in the conversation in the AL Central. They're five games behind the Guardians, who you're going to see later this week. So a matchup of good teams in a series in Minnesota that we're going to talk about next. I'm not taking any huge conclusions out of that Pirate series. First one back from the All-Star break. They're going to be just fine. Knocking some rust off, figuring all that out. I have no issues with the Phillies right now. It just wasn't the most fun weekend from the perspective of, oh, you probably should have won one, if not two more of those games. But that is what it is, folks. That's baseball. And I'll say that till the day I die. Some things, the explanation in this sport are just that's baseball. But yeah, we have uh, something awesome planned coming up, right? Coming up next segment. I'm going to preview the series with the Twins. But I also have a very special guest, my younger brother, my mother as well. But my younger brother is a Minnesota Twins fan. He's a Minnesota fan through and through. So I figured, hey, why not make this a family affair? So I'm going to have him on. We're going to talk a little trash and we're going to uh, discuss the matchup between our two favorite teams. So that coming up next as we continue Locked on Phillies. First, though, I want to tell you about our friends over at Prize Picks. You know Prize Picks. You have to by now. They're America's number one daily fantasy sports app. They got over 5 million active members, and they're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's not like the other apps where you have to play against other players and you could be close to perfect, but one person gets a higher score than you, and the next thing you know, well, you don't win anything. No, it's just you against the numbers. It's simple. You just pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. I mean, the lineup setting takes like 60 seconds. You see like Bryce Harper has, uh, I don't know, they think he's going to get one and a half hits. You think he's going to get more than that? Simple. Put him in your lineup. You think that uh, Ranger Suarez, who throws tonight, is going to continue to have a rough patch? We hope not. But you put him in there and say less strikeouts than they're assuming. And you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You just turn $10 into $1,000 like that. It's super easy. So download the Prize Picks app today. Use code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code Locked on MLB on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks is the best. You just pick more or pick less. It's that easy. I also want to tell you about our friends over at eBay Motors because they're amazing. If you've got problems with your car or if you just want to upgrade, they're the place to go because they know passion, drive, and patience. That's the formula for winning championships. And it's also what keeps your vehicle alive. eBay Motors, they like I told you, they've got everything you need to maintain your vehicle, level it up to peak performance, whatever you want to do. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, much more. You might be into speed, power, or style, but whatever it is, eBay Motors has you covered. They've got over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. And you're always going to find exactly what you're looking for at the right price too. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning uh, rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need, 
at the prices you want. It's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. Joining me now is my younger brother, a Minnesota Twins fan. This is Chase, uh, Locked On Phillies fan. Be nice to him. Uh, he's a big Locked On Network fan. I know you follow Locked On Timberwolves, Wild, uh, Twins, and Vikings. But we've got a grudge match in the family because you're a Twins fan, I'm a Phillies fan, and we got a three-game matchup in Minnesota. So I figured, hey, why not have you all talk some trash and also uh, get an idea of what we should see from the Twins. So, like – I know you guys are 10 games over 500, but five games back in the division. Where's the mindset of Twins fans at right now? It's It's been a, a disappointing road so far as far as coming off first playoff series win last postseason, um, kind of petering out against the Astros. Um, the fan base thought that there were going to be some big moves made in the offseason. It kind of doubled down on the moves they made at the last trade deadline. Um really going for it and uh the poll ads being the poll ads they kind of cut payroll and and you know chop the fans off at the knees so um that was the the kind of feelings going into the season i think they've overperformed for what's on the roster and um especially dealing with injuries as of late um correa has been out royce lewis who's phenomenal has been out and they've been missing some pretty key bullpen and rotation pieces. But all in all, maybe like a, a 6 out of 10 on the season. Hey, listen to this kid. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, also, when you see the Phillies, the first place team, not just in the NL East, not just in the National League, but in all of baseball when it comes to record, do you ever think grew up in the same town in South Jersey, you should have been a Phillies fan instead of a Twins fan? Has that crossed your mind this year? Nah, no sheepishness here. Um, I like being my own guy. I like being in uh, enemy territory. Well, hey, at least you guys got some playoff wins last year. And it seems like they're going to be in position to be in the postseason again, whether that's winning the division or the wild card in the American League. So uh, twins are fighting for it. And one other thing, man, like what are you going into this series expecting? Do you think that you're going to be getting a call from me Wednesday after that one o'clock game when the series ends and hear me talking trash about the Phillies took two or three, the Phillies might have swept you. Do you go into this and say, like, are you worried about the Twins' chances or do you have confidence? I think it'd be a good series to come out one and two. And that's no pumping up my brother, you know, locked on Phillies. Um, they just got beat down by the Milwaukee Brewers. They're on a three game losing streak. And again, no Carlos Correa, no. Royce Lewis, no Jose Miranda, which Phillies fans probably don't know, but um, he's having a great season. So most of our infields out, and again, key rotational pieces and, and bullpen arms are missing. So yeah, but you're starting in your uh, bullpen's been like good this year, hasn't it? If they have a lead, if they have <laughs> a lead in the eighth, it's pretty much closed doors. Any other time, close game, tenth inning on, it's a disaster class. So. That sounds like fun. Well, Target Field is a great setting for it. Uh, weather up there in Minnesota this time of year. I know you live in Philadelphia with me. You're like right down the street, but you watch all the games. I mean, it's warm and everything up there now, mm -hmm. right? Like when I think Minnesota, I think it's cold as anything. No, it's warm. The ball's flying around. The Twins had a, a good streak going, 28 consecutive games with a home run. Um, that's probably where most of their run support comes from. So just uh, you know, look out for that during the – during the games, during the series. So a lot of power in the lineup, but, um, you know, a lot of futility as well other than that. Okay. Well, hey, man, thank you for – I know you don't do this. You're in the middle of your work day, but I figured it would be fun to have you on since I know you root for the competitive team. And uh, maybe – so here's what we'll do. We'll make a deal, all right? If the Twins win the series or ah, – no, let's do sweep the series because I know you're a busy guy. If the Twins mm -hmm. sweep the series – We'll talk either on Wednesday or Thursday. I'll have you back on. You can have like a, a five-minute gloating session if that does happen, okay? That works. All right, man. Well, appreciate it. That's my younger brother, Chase. We'll be back to the rest of our episode with just me solo in just a second. All right. That was a fun interview with my brother, Chase. Uh, it's always good to talk a little trash amongst family. So uh, I love doing that. And he is a big time Twins fan. You can tell he knows a little bit of what he's talking about. 
Uh, but I do hope that we're not doing that uh, gloating session that I promised him at the end of this series as the Phils prepare to take on the Minnesota Twins. Game once tonight, 7.40 p.m., a little bit later here on the East Coast because they're playing in a central time zone. But a matchup between two teams that have playoff aspirations, one team in the Phillies that is set for the playoffs. The Twins, they're finding their way. But the Twins are a good team. They really are. They've performed pretty well so far this year. And tonight's game has me a little bit worried because normally I wouldn't say worried with this guy on the mound. Ranger Suarez toes the rubber. The numbers still look great. He has, for all the struggles he's gone through over the past four starts or so, a 10-4 and four record, a 2.76 ERA, a 1.04 whip. If I had shown you that, right, if I said on July, what is it, the 22nd? If I showed you on July 22nd that that was going to be Ranger Suarez's stat line through 114 innings pitched this year, I think we all would have taken it. The problem is, how you get there matters, and right now Ranger Suarez hasn't been throwing too well. He's had some time off because of the All-Star break, so we'll see if that was exactly what he needed, the elixir he needed to fix his problems with the Philadelphia Phillies in the recent times. But honestly, I, I don't know. I look at it and I say, you're going to have a pretty darn good shot to win anytime Ranger Suarez is on the mound still, and I hope that that worked everything out because I don't think – that there's anything like long term wrong with Ranger Suarez. I think he's just in a tough spot right now. And uh, Bailey Ober is the guy who's on the mound for the Minnesota Twins. He's eight and five. A lot of decisions there with a 4 1 4 ERA, 106 strikeouts. And yeah, righty. So that helps the Philadelphia Phillies put the best lineup on the field. We're going to have a conversation at some point this week about Bryson Stott. We'll see what the Philadelphia Phillies do with him because he's struggling and he hasn't really come out of it. But you should be able to get after Billy Ober. 106 strikeouts and 100 innings even shows you the Ks can be possible, but he's given up 16 home runs. You heard Chase talking about how the ball's been flying at target field. So you should have an opportunity there. And then just looking at the leaders offensively, uh, Carlos Correa, you look at it, uh, he's been one of their biggest bats. He was removed from a game a couple days ago with a heel injury, and he was replaced from the all-star roster. He's not available right now. He's on the injured list. So the Minnesota Twins do not have their big boppers in the lineup. They do have Carlos Santana, who you'll remember from his time here in Philadelphia, but he's only leading the team in home runs with 14. Uh, the Twins have had a lot of injuries, and you may be catching them at a good time. So we'll see. My expectations for the series, two out of three. That's my expectation for most teams the Philadelphia Phillies match up against, especially now that they're at full health. But uh, speaking of teams the Phillies match up against, we got to talk about the Braves and Whit Merrifield. <sighs> this is why, you know what? No, I'll tell you coming up because this is why I've been saying something that I've been saying all year long. And I'm not worried about it per se, but I kind of am. I'll explain as we wrap up today's episode of Locked on Phillies. And I want to tell you about our friends first over at FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel's amazing. And I love sports. I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But basketball's done. Hockey's done. Football hasn't started yet. Baseball's the only game in town, at least when it comes to the major North American sports. And that means the sports aren't sports and like you want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. And you should join in on it because all you have to do is open up the app, dream up bets anytime you're in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer with America's number one sports book. So Whit Merrifield has signed with the Atlanta Braves. Very, very interesting move. Now, this comes on the heels of, like I told you, Ozzy Albies, eight weeks out. He's got a fracture. He may be done for the regular season. He may be done for close to the regular season. We'll, we'll see when he comes back. Uh, Max Freed is kind of banged up right now. It doesn't seem long-term for Freed, but they're already missing Acuna. They're missing Strider. They've had a rough season when it comes to injuries. And I'm not weeping for the Atlanta Braves. Listen, sorry. I don't want anyone to get hurt. I want players to stay healthy. They're people too, even if they do play for the Braves. But when injuries happen, I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't make the Phillies path better. But it also meant that Atlanta needed some help. And I've been saying all year about guys you can and can't send down. Oh, he doesn't have options. Oh, he won't clear waivers. This is why this guy's on the team. How would you feel if you did this and you 
release this guy or you uh, had to clear waivers with someone, and next thing you know, the Atlanta Braves pick him up. Well, that's exactly what happened with Whit Merrifield. He was released last week by the Philadelphia Phillies and – or last week, maybe it's two weeks ago. It was ahead of the All-Star break. And then you know what happens? The Atlanta Braves decide just a little bit later that they're going to pick him up and sign him. And you'd be – you're lying to me right now, right? If you are a true – Philadelphia Phillies or a Philadelphia sports fan, you have two reactions to this move. The first reaction is, I know that Whit Merrifield is going to go down to Atlanta and get an opportunity to play more consistently and hit like 340 for them. Like he's just going to be unbelievable because of course that's how it always happens. He couldn't hit the broadside of a barn here. He was last of qualified hitters in exit velocity. No, not near the bottom. Dead last in baseball in qualified hitters in exit velocity. And now he's going to go to Atlanta and he's going to hit like 10 home runs the rest of the season and play amazing defense. Like that's where the warped mind of a Philadelphia sports fan goes. But if you're also a true Phillies fan this year, your second thought should be, nah, That's crazy. I mean, this year, the Philadelphia Phillies, like they've had everything falling their way. And also, Dave Dombrowski is a great evaluator of talent. I was surprised that they released Whit Merrifield when they did. I'm not surprised that they did it. The timing was all that was weird to me. So that shows you where the Braves are at, right? Isn't this like the perfect example of the difference between these two teams this year? And it's kind of where the Phillies were the last couple years, at least in the regular season. I remember what happened in the postseason, Braves fans. Don't think I forgot. Uh, But in the regular season, the last two years, the Philadelphia Phillies have been trying to chase down Atlanta. And that means that like anything available, they're not feeding on scraps per se, but they're looking for any competitive advantage to try and close the gap between the two teams. Now it's the other way around. Atlanta is taking your cast-offs, Philadelphia. Whit Merrifield was not cutting it here. And the Braves are in such dire straits that they said, well, I guess we got to take the chance. That should make you feel good as a Phillies fan. That should be the second place you get to. Once you get over the irrational, this guy who hasn't hit all year is going to become an all-star caliber player down there in Atlanta. And listen, I still kind of feel like it might happen. But like the large majority of my reaction to this is, oh, this isn't the Rockies picking him up, right? This isn't the, uh, I don't know, the White Sox deciding to give him a chance to be like a veteran leader in the clubhouse. This isn't a team that's like barely scraping by that needs to find a little spark to get into the postseason. No, this is the Atlanta Braves who think that they're a postseason team and they should be still give them that credit, Uh, but they should still be. And they say, we need a little bit of help to survive this. We're going to get the worst player from our rival team to be a bigger role on our team. It's not exactly a recipe for success, but it's one that the Braves are trying to employ right now. And that should make you feel awesome about the Phillies. It really, really should. And I'm not rooting, like I am rooting against Whit Merrifield because he signed with the Braves. But I don't see this as this big like betrayal, right? I don't see, he wasn't like he was a lifetime Philly that then went to your rival as soon as you decided you were moving on. You brought him in here for this year. Maybe next year. You had an option. You released that. You bought it out. The Braves don't have to worry about anything monetarily because you're still paying his contract. But that is what it is. That's just the nature of deciding you want to release a player. Ultimately, here's what I think. I think this will be one of, if not the last times, that we bring up Whit Merrifield on this podcast. I don't see him being a major issue. Unless like he's a member. He might not even be on the team for the postseason for the Braves when they get by, uh, guys back healthy. But I don't see this as like, a, oh, he's going to become a thorn in the side of the Phillies or hit well enough that we have any reason to talk about him. It's just, it's interesting. The more interesting part of it is the dynamic between these two teams and how it's shifted based on how well the Philadelphia Phillies have played this year. That's the true moment when they're taking your scraps and you're saying, okay, well, we've still got a huge lead, huge lead in the division. Have fun. Make those moves if you need to. He wasn't good enough to play here. Maybe he's good enough to play there. I love that when other teams are taking players you don't need and using them as long as it doesn't turn into that. (laughs) Again, as long as it doesn't turn into he's the acquisition for the Braves that sparks their season or something. I don't think we live in that bizarre world. I think that's been suspended for the 2024 Phillies because everything's just going their way. And even though this series against the Pirates did not end up in their favor, well, 
you're looking at a situation where you can go out and make everything right by winning two or three against the Twins. That's all for today's episode of Locked on Philly. Special thanks once again to my younger brother, Chase, for uh, taking some time to join me on today's episode. Tomorrow, we're going to react to game one of the series with the Twins. We're going to take a look at what's going on just kind of with the organization. Tomorrow, we'll have that Bryson Stock conversation about whether or not he's a platoon player. So if you're interested in that, you're going to want to tune into tomorrow's episode. But again, we're done for today. So thank you so much for checking us out here on Locked on Phillies. One more time, I want to remind you, we're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube. All that stuff really, really helps us out here on Locked on Phillies. And it gets you notifications when new episodes are posted. Uh, it costs you nothing, takes like two seconds. So I appreciate everyone who's going to do that. Okay, well, Let's bounce back, Phils. That's all for today's episode of Locked on Phillies.